Brookhaven. You don't have to work out, just stop by. Hi friends, welcome to another vlog. It's Tuesday and it is about 10 after five. Tonight we're doing takeout. We're just gonna do a little chicken and some sides. Yesterday, Chris made some red beans and rice and so the kids will likely eat chicken and fries. We will eat, Chris and I will likely eat leftover red beans and rice with a piece of chicken on the side and keep it moving. That's the best I can do today. Today we had just a regular work day. We had a meeting, it went really well. I had to kind of do some administrative work. Chris ran some errands and then we had some lunch and then we started to film and then we got a call from school. Christian needed a change of clothes because he's potty training and you know, we have some accidents throughout the day and he needed a, a, a change of clothes. So Chris ran that over there and I stayed here and I filmed myself. I had to film some skincare today so I am bare faced and I was like by the time I finished it was four o'clock so there was really no need to put on makeup Mommy. because it's the end of the day. Mommy. Yes, yes sir. You know, strawberries for the little one. Yeah. Here you go, bubs. Here you go. <laughs> on the floor, please. Not on the couch. So, that has been Tuesday so far in a nutshell. It's 93 degrees outside, so no makeup today is fine by me. The rest of the day is going to be pretty laid back. I'm about to open up some PR packages. The PR packages are just... They're exciting, they're coming in. I think there's a lot of summer releases happening and there's lots to share that I will sprinkle throughout this video. If I just sat down and did it all at once, this would not be a vlog, it would just be an unboxing video. So we got three boxes today, so I wanna unpack those with you and then I'm gonna make the kids lunch. You said what? We didn't eat lunch. You didn't eat lunch today? No. I made you a cheese quesadilla for lunch, you didn't eat it? Okay. A little Venus and Rifle Paper Co. collab. Look how pretty that is. And it's like my favorite print. I think this is, I want to say this is Strawberry Fields, which is one of my favorite prints. I have like, I actually already have this bag because it's so cute. It makes such a great travel bag. Uh, for like all of my travel size makeup and skincare. And then this, the Venus Rifle Paper Co. collab, the designs are exclusively at Target. And so they have this beautiful honey flower shave cream. Let me see what that smells like. Ah, I love it. it. Smells fresh and sweet without being too much. This is the Deluxe Smooth Sensitive Razor. So excited to try that. Venus Rifle Paper Co. Gillette Venus Rifle Paper Co. have teamed up to create a design-inspired shave collection available exclusively at Target and Target.com. And this limited edition collection was designed to bring a moment of beauty to your everyday, pairing Rifle Paper Co.'s signature hand-painted florals with Venus's trusted performance and fan favorite products. I love it. The line of razors, blades, and shaving cream aims to enhance any beauty regimen, providing a smooth shave that is always in bloom. I love it. This comes with, it came with two, one razor, two cartridges in that pack, and then they gave five more uh, cartridges with the little gel bars on there. And then we got four more. So this one is the Comfort Glide. And then this one is the Deluxe Smooth. Yes, this is for finished. sensitive skin. Finished. All finished? Thank you, bubs. All finished. All right, so, love that. What a just, what a pretty box. What a lovely box. It's like so pretty, I don't even wanna throw it away. <laughs> it is a bag. It is a convertible backpack from Cole Hahn. 
which is so great because on days like we had on Saturday, I had the kids and I had my nephews and nieces and we were just walking around in the park and like, you know, for me, I always have some sort of bag with me, but sometimes like taking a bag in the park isn't, it just isn't functional, you know? But taking something like this where I can have snacks or wipes and hand sanitizer and all of that just makes so much more sense. And so when Cole Khan asked, you know, reached out for me to like pick a bag and I saw this, it was a no brainer. Cause just having a bag like this is so great. Not even just with the kids, but like on vacation or whatnot. And I think for me, you guys know me, I'm not really a casual kind of person. So I like the idea of a backpack, but I still wanted something like polished and something that, you know, looks good as well. And I like that they have these top handles for you to hold as well. So in the case that you're holding it on the side, it still looks really good. But then of course you can wear it on your back because it is a backpack. To say I'm excited about this is an understatement. Love, 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 love. I'm so excited about this. Oh, I love it. This is the color British Tan, which was, guys, so it has a pocket in the front. So it has a zip situation here, of course, on the top, right? Another great situation, and inside, oh, it has two little compartments. And then on the other side they have, there's like tons of compartments in here, which again, for me is great. But then on the back, they also have another compartment that doesn't zip and another zip compartment. So I love that. Like this is great for like traveling. This is great for days at the park, even days at the beach. I love, 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 love this so much. Thank you guys so much for sending Kohan. This is, Honestly, gonna be one of my go-to summer bags. I love it so much. This is such a great, it's such a great bag in general, but if you're looking for like a chic bag, mom bag on the go, this would oh, this would actually make a pretty decent um, diaper bag. Probably for like an older kid, like I like older young kids, if that makes sense. So for like Christian and Callie, because they're two and four, I still have to have stuff, <laughs> you know what I mean? I need to have wipes, I need to have applesauce, I need to have things. And this is the kind of bag versus taking like a, a traditional handbag. But I love it so much, it's absolutely beautiful. I need to drink some water, I feel like. Today I'm wearing a little dress from Target. It is <clears throat> really cute. Has pockets, has like these little cutouts. That's what the back looks like. I love the detail on there. I love the V-neck. I may wear, wear this tomorrow because I didn't really go anywhere today. I didn't really shoot in it. I actually was in a robe while I was shooting my skincare, you know, content. And then I changed into this and it's just such a cute dress and it didn't really get the the shine that it deserves. So I may wear this tomorrow. Hey. I remembered the thing, it was Gogurt, but huh? as in I remembered the thing I wanted uh, to get from the grocery store, it was Gogurt, but it's fine, it's not a big thing. Smile, you're on candid camera. Yeah, it was part of the, the part package. Of yeah, it's uh, their collection exclusively at Target with Gillette. Oh. Yeah, that was pretty cool. That's not today. Um, thank you for getting that. If you just toss them over there, I'll tackle it. <laughs> I'm gonna do a real little cheese, a little cheese and spinach sandwich for everyone tomorrow. Not great for you, but man, what salty deliciousness. I like to make school lunches before dinner, so that way after dinner, all I have to do is load up the dishes from dinner in the dishwasher. We're pretty much done with the day for the most part. We'll wipe the table down, 
do a nice little quick sweep of the floor, and then the house is reset for the morning because the kitchen has to be cleaned since it's the center of the house and this is an open floor plan, so. And that's that. So what I like to do for the kids or for meals in general, because this is kind of like my framework for meals, is what I call eats. So there's an entree, an appetizer, a treat, and then sustenance. Usually for lunch for the kids, the sustenance is fruit, but in other instances, fruit can be a treat, especially if you're doing like a vegetable, you know? So typically that is what may happen in like a breakfast or a dinner situation. But like tomorrow, the entree is a grilled cheese sandwich. The appetizer is um, popcorn. <laughs> the treat is graham crackers. And we're sneaking in a little uh, applesauce that also has veggies in it as well. And then the sustenance is strawberries. So usually when I follow the eats framework, it forces me to like make a balanced meal and it forces me to give the kids options and give myself options and Chris options as well. And it's great because what I like about the EATS framework is it works for any type of diet. So if you're vegan or vegetarian, this works. If you are paleo, this works. If you are omnivores like us and you eat um, pretty much anything, um, it works. And again, the goal here is about balance. You know, like some meals are gonna be super healthy and a little bit cleaner. Some, you know, might be a little bit more indulgent, but I think it's really all about balance as you approach day to day. And the other reason why I like the EATS framework is because it also works for any time of day. So EATS is kind of how you know, I build meals for everyone here in the house. I talk about it in my book, Everyday Magic, because mealtime is so important when you have a family. Christian James, sit down, please. No! Yeah, you're not being no, safe, no, love. No, no, no! Well, Dad said he'd be right back, right? Because mealtime is so important. You know, it's really such a great way for the family to congregate and connect after a day of school or day of work or, you know, during vacation or whatnot. And again, I like the EATS method because it helps you do everything from build a school lunch to even figure out what to make for like a dinner party if you have friends that you haven't seen for a while. And it allows you to be balanced, but it also allows you to be balanced regardless of what your diet is. So that's how I do that. It's dinner time. So speaking of eats, we're about to get into that. Not likely we'll see you guys tomorrow. I like it. Good morning, my friends. It is Wednesday, and last night it stormed really, really loudly. It was just like really intense, a lot more intense than I anticipated. The thunder woke up sweet Christian, who has been sleeping in our bed a lot because I think his little mattress in his crib, I think he's outgrown it. He's like, I think he's super uncomfortable because like clockwork, he wakes up at, he wakes up at like, right before midnight and then he sleeps through the night in our bed and so we need to get him a new mattress and get him together and just turn his crib into a toddler bed so that is something that is on my list of things to do this month everybody woke up though um the girls woke up and came into our room around three like three or four and then Callie said she was hungry at 4.30, so I didn't want to keep on going in and out of the room and waking everybody else up. So we just slept on the couch in the loft, and then Christian woke up at five. I guess he was hungry as well. It was just a whole thing. So it was just a party last night, and I woke up late this morning kind of scrambling because 
laundry service comes on Wednesday mornings and I just wasn't prepared. I didn't do anything last night. Um, I was scrambling and trying to not miss him and thankfully he waited for me and this morning he was like, you're the only customer I'll wait for because you're always so good to me and all of my coworkers and I thought that was really sweet and so Super important, one, to be kind to everybody, but especially those who uh, do services for us because, you know, one, you might wake up late and you need them to wait for you, but I just always want people who, you know, you know, whether it's the lawn service guy, the laundry service guy, whoever it is, I just always want people to feel seen and appreciated, and so I was so thankful that he waited for me this morning. So I am... Already done with my first meeting. I need to, one, I'm gonna wash my hair, not the wig, my actual hair. We actually have to do wash day for a brand campaign. And then I also have to film another little something for another project. So we've got a full day of work today, which I always like, because it makes the day go fast and I just like that. We're gonna do turkey burgers tonight, so I'm gonna go ahead and take the ground turkey out of the freezer, and that can be ready to go. Honestly, anytime I have made a decision for dinner in the morning or the night before, I'm good to go, so that was super helpful. And I was telling my, I think I was telling my best friend the other day, it's just like, the reason why I like scheduling ahead and just knowing what's going to happen is because the, the act of thinking and making a decision in real time is so draining and I have so much work to do today. I don't wanna use that energy on deciding something that could have been decided ahead of time, if that makes any sense. So, we've made a dinner decision and it feels good. I wanna conduct myself as like a robot. I want things decided for me, what I'm going to wear, what I'm going to write about on the blog or what I'm gonna say in the content. I just want those things like, I just wanna conduct myself as a robot. You know, that's like the running joke, but that's what helps me stay consistent. And then also, to me, I feel like I can even be a little bit more present because I'm not busy trying to make a decision in real time. I need to get myself together. I'm gonna go do like a really kind of glow up morning routine, get myself together, I'm gonna exfoliate. I am then going to get another cup of coffee and get some breakfast in my belly and then take it from there. What I do also need to make a decision on is lunch. Cause just knowing that, especially with all the kids home, makes things a lot easier. My mom is here, which I'm so thankful for because the kids are on 10 this morning. They're just in rare form and it's raining outside so they can't go outside and play. I wasn't able to go outside and get my walk in, but my God, um, even if I have to just sit on the porch, I'm gonna let the, even just the overcast sky hit my face. I am back, I'm gonna sing. If I do that, it's gonna make noise, so. Anyway, I am getting ready to speak. I am actually speaking to YouTube Black Voices, which is a group of students that, and creators, that YouTube selects and then they like give them special tools and access to special classes and master classes on how to produce high quality content consistently. And I am teaching a class on pretty much how to make your big ideas come to life, which I think is so cool that they selected me to do this. I'm so sorry, I, this, the lighting is not great, but I figured this would be a good time for us to chat. I don't have much time. This morning we had a meeting and I just worked on finishing up a couple of projects. And you know, this week has been one of those weeks where I just really had to extend myself grace. So I was able to do that for others, you know. And I feel like this has been a constant theme because we were just talking about forgiveness, which to me is a, 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 a an extension of grace in my in my eyes. Somebody was asking about how do you forgive, and I definitely think it's easier said than done. I guess I could do a little. I might just do a little editing afterwards. 
I need to see how the project for the new site is going. It's been so delayed and I'm just so ready for the new site to be up because I'm so excited for you guys to see it. Okay, I finished my little pre-call before the presentation. I'm just gonna take a couple of bites. I got some shrimp yaki soba after the call. I just did a couple of curls in front to refresh my hair. My curls are pretty much still intact. And then I'm gonna run upstairs and pop some lashes on. I'm so happy for these 10 minutes. I didn't know how long the pre-call was gonna be. I was just gonna happily do my face or, you know, do the, the class without lashes. But now that I have the time, I feel like I'll look like 100% me. It's Thursday. Today has been productive, kind of like chill. Started it out with the meeting. Uh, then I had an interview. I had lunch and then Christopher and I went out and got us a little after lunch like cold delight because it's 95 degrees today. It feels like 105 because of the humidity. It's intense, guys. That's the only way to describe it. The only way to describe it is intense. Anyway, I'm about to head upstairs to make some rice. We're gonna eat some African food that mommy made. We're gonna eat some palava sauce, which is like this really delicious like stew made from, what is palava sauce made out of? It has red palm oil and then some kind of like grains. <laughs> That's the only way to describe it. And then you put it over rice and you eat it with a protein like fish or chicken or turkey. And it's absolutely delicious. The kids love it. And I don't know how to make Liberian food. I'm gonna change that this year. But I don't know how to make Liberian food, so what mommy will do is she'll make it for me and then we'll eat some, but we'll freeze a lot of it for days like this where I either don't wanna cook or, you know, we just feel like eating Liberian food and it's really great. So that's what we're doing for dinner today. I wanted to show you guys my lipstick. I don't have any on now, but I've come up with a really beautiful nude kind of, y'all yeah, know I love a neutral lip lip combos I wanted to show you. So first up is the Revlon. My friends at Revlon, this is Bare Affair. And actually this would look really great with a lip pencil. Do I have one with me? Oh, is this regular? Oh my gosh, is this regular pillow talk? Okay, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna put some pillow talk on the lip liner. Okay, I, have, I haven't done it with the lip liner, but I feel like It'll definitely look good with the lip liner. So Bareface, the lipstick, is like, it's a it's a nude nude. Like if I did not have this lip liner on, I look like a ghost when I first put it on. So you put that on. Look how cute that is. Such a great nude color. Like this will look amazing with like a deep brown, like a chocolatey brown liner. But the pillow top makes it like a little bit more pinky, which I'm totally into. Then I take my YSL Rouge for Lepte Shine in, this is 121, does it have a name? It's so small. I think it's just 121, guys. I could be wrong. But I take this and I top it to give it like a little bit more shine. See how pretty that is? I love the shine. I love a little shiny situation. Now, I'm going to take the Maybelline Lifter Gloss in Amber, which is 007, and add this to it and make it like a little bit more like peachy. It's so pretty. Isn't that 
pretty. It says like a pretty peachy nude situation. I love the layers. So it's like shiny, but it's not like weird and overly shiny. All right, beautiful peachy pink situation. I love it. So yeah, <laughs> these three colors. And honestly, the best lip colors always end up coming from like more than one lipstick. Am I right? I feel like it always comes from more than one lip product, but I like it. And I think it is worth the little hassle that I essentially just put myself through. I mean, not really such a very little small hassle, but I love how it looks. And honestly, I just kept on putting stuff on a couple of days ago until I found something I like and I've been repeating it for the last couple of days and I wanted to show you guys. So yeah, little two of the products are drugstore. You could probably achieve what you wanted. Mm, uh, I was gonna say, yeah, you could probably achieve this look even without the YSL. So I think you could go Lifter Gloss, the Maybelline Lifter Gloss, and the Revlon uh, Lipstick in Bare Face, because the Bare Face gives you like that really good, like opaque, nude, opaque, very neutral base as a lip. I like the lip liner just to give your lip shape, but I have done it without lip liner and it still looks cute, so. Uh, there you go, that's my that's my thing. That's what I'm doing right now. And then today I'm just kind of using my usual suspects, like the NARS, uh, I forget what the foundation's called, but I've been using it. A little Pat McGrath blush, uh, just so you know. I literally am lazy when it comes to my eyes, so I did bronzer on my eyes and kept it moving. And that's it, a little highlight spritzed my face. And that is it, friends. I have a little set on from Target. Halter top and skirt situation. Just something easy. I had to drop the kids off to school this morning. And then, it's just hot. So it's like you don't wanna get too, it's just so hot to be doing anything else but cotton. So, um, but it's such an easy set. Like I feel like this would look cute with jeans or shorts. This skirt would be a, amazing with a t-shirt. So I just love how it looks and feels. So I'm gonna go upstairs and cook some rice and make sure we have dinner on time. Last time it was dinner and I went to go cook some rice, I forgot to press cook, which is like one of the main things you have to do for the rice cooker. It needs to have rice in it. And then you have to press cook so it can actually get cooked. And so we prepped everything else and Chris goes, you forgot to start the rice cooker. So I wanted to make sure that I paid close attention to that just now. One of the main things I have been doing to create just like a rhythm and a routine. And if you guys wanna see more of these things, just like let me know in the comments below, like in a separate video, or if you like them in vlogs, let me know as well. Is that once the kids come home um, from school, I like to give them a kiss, give them a snack, and then I get into just like make their lunches and get it done. <laughs> like, because basically I like to create a situation that once dinner is done, all we have to do is take the dishes that are in the, like, that we ate with and just put them in the dishwasher and just press run the dishwasher. So even everything that's in the sink now, I'm about to load in the dishwasher. Everything else throughout the day has been loaded. We just have like a few little stragglers from lunch. And I just like to create kind of like a constant flow of the house just because the kitchen is like the central location. It's like, it's the nucleus of the house. like not only location wise, but even just culture wise with how our house operates. Like when the kids come, they're gonna, you know, drop all their stuff off in like the little drop off section in their cubbies. They're gonna grab their screens or whatnot. Oh my gosh, I need to make sure they're charged. 
Okay, I just thought about <laughs> their little screens being charged because they usually get they usually get 60 to 90 minutes of screen time after school, especially like lately because they aren't allowed to play outside because it's so hot. It's like too dangerous for them to play outside. I like to make sure that after school they're able to kind of like decompress with a snack and screen time while Chris and I reset for the next day and prep dinner. So I am now going to defrost the palava sauce and load up the dishwasher and when they get home, I can pretty much just get their lunch ready and then we can like eat within an hour. Like ideally, like 5.30 dinner time is really such a sweet spot for us, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna charge this Apple Watch because it says it was dying, so I'm gonna charge it, but I need to remember, oh, I can tell it looks like. I need to remember to put it back on because I wanna count the rest of my steps because I get quite a bit of steps in once the kids get home. Alexa, set timer for 60 minutes. So that's also one of like my big things is that if I need to remember to do something, whether it's like charge my phone, get my Apple Watch off of the charger, check something that's in the oven, my one of my favorite tips is putting some like putting on some kind of timer on my phone, on my Apple Watch, on Homegirl right there, or our Google Home. It just makes things easier. And then you don't have to worry about remembering because you have something that's going to remind you. You know, I'm realizing that we have access to so much, just as a society in general, and that we underutilize so many things. Like we usually have things just for the sake of saying that we've acquired them, and then we don't end up using them. And I'm like, a timer is such a valuable tool. So if you're somebody who forgets things or you feel bombarded with everything that you have to remember, use your timer. It is a lifesaver. Even like getting the kids to be like, hey, meet me downstairs for breakfast at 7.15 and I'll set their little timer to like remind them by the time it's 7.15, come on downstairs. So yeah, I'm gonna load this dishwasher and defrost dinner. I mean, also, you need to understand that again, people don't be breaking things up in the middle. Hello there. Good morning. It's Friday. And I want the light to be better for this situation. Good morning. The kids are off to school. Christopher just took them to school. And I am drinking some coffee and I'm about to get some reading in. I am starting a new book. I just started a new audio book. Uh, last, actually this week I finished What You Do Is Who You Are by Ben Horowitz. And I'll put the little graphic right there if you're interested. I think it was on my last, one of my last vlogs. Maybe the last one that I did or like two weeks or two vlogs ago, someone commented that I should include the books that I talk about in the vlogs. And you're absolutely right and I will do that. So thanks so much for asking to do that because I love sharing books and I share them with you guys oftentimes on my Instagram. Um, I also have like a whole list of the books I wanna read this year over on the site. So I'll leave that post in this description box as well. And what you do is who you are is excellent. It's really about how to create culture. And while the book is about how to build culture within your company or your organization, I do think that building culture in general is so important. So for me, I think about the culture within my marriage, the culture within my motherhood and, you know, the culture in my family and household and the culture within my friendships. And so it like it to me, it just taught me a whole lot about like how to establish virtues within each group that I'm a part of, be it personally or professionally. And it was just excellent. There's so many great examples there. It's just good. And I did not read the physical book. I, I listened to the audio book and the author did not read it. It was, um, I forget what they call them. I guess it's like, it's not a voice actor, but I guess it's like a professional reader or audiobook reader or reader. I'm not sure what you would call them. But 
he was excellent and really like helped keep me engaged with the book, which I don't I don't think is always so easy to do. One, when you're not the author and then the title is a nonfiction book. And I'm a nonfiction girl. I'm not into fiction books. I shouldn't even say I'm not into fiction books. I just don't often read them. I would rather watch my fiction and yeah, so. This was really good, I really enjoyed it. This is a book I'm gonna be suggesting a lot because I do think that creating a culture that matters, which is incredibly important for me and my company, but even just in my family life as well, is so important and it was so, it was so good. So, and now I'm listening to The High Five Habit by Mel Robbins and she's the one reading the book, which again is always great because the author knows what they're talking about and you know she has a way of being really positive and affirming in uh, this like big way without it like sounding or feeling inauthentic and i think that that is incredible and i think that we need more of that and I think I try to do that in my own way with the content I create here or, you know, definitely with the book, uh, which is right there. I realized I did not mention my book <laughs> in the last vlog, but I, of course there's like the actual video we did for it and I was sitting at my desk here. But yeah, the book is called Everyday Magic and it was so important to me. I wanted to write a book about joy. I wanted to write a book about every day, like, I, like the super simple stuff like, you know, I, I say it in the book a couple of times, but I'm like, it's not deep, it's deliberate. And not only is that true about what we talk about in the book, but the thing about joy is that it's not deep. It's, it's a deliberate like commitment to being grateful for your life and being pleased with what you do and understanding that you might not be perfect, you might not be everything to everyone, which you're not supposed to be, but understanding that you're more than enough, even if you fall short, or even if you're just having a regular Wednesday, you might not be out on vacation, it might not be your birthday, but what was so important to me is that you understood that having joy in your everyday takes work, and that work is worth doing, and there should be joy in that. So the subtitle is The Joy of Not Being Everything and Still Being More Than Enough, and we really go through the magic of all of these everyday things in your everyday lives. And so I'm very excited for you guys to check it out. Um, it's it's really kind of surreal that I am somebody's author. You know, just a little author. So that's that. You can pre-order the book. I'll leave the, the little pre-order linky link in the description box. Um, but I think it's cool that you'll be able to listen to the book. I recorded the audio book a couple of weeks ago and you'll also be able to physically read it. So I'm about to get some reading time in. I was just thinking that one habit that I had last year and throughout 2020 is that I would schedule reading time and it's a practice that I've fallen out of and I really wanna get back into. So I'm going to give myself a little reading time and then schedule out the rest of all will all of next week for when I want to read. So, and I love that all my books are now here at my desk. Check this out. Check that out. So you have these books here. You have books all the way up. I, I typically read more than one book at once. I usually, if I do anything more than three, things start getting a little dicey. I start to get inconsistent. But what I like to do is listen to at least one audiobook. Um, but I guess I could listen to two. I like to listen to one audiobook, and then like when I'm doing things like putting on my makeup or I'm driving in the car, I'll listen. And then I like to read one physical book um, or sometimes two. And what I've been trying to balance out is that I want to balance out like reading of like a professional development physical book and then a personal one like one on like family or uh, marriage or you know self-care or you know what I mean or you know just like even personal development in general so just trying to keep a little bit of a balance because there are so many books that I want to read um, 
what I realized is I, I didn't finish reading Make Time, but what I'm going to do is actually pull up my list from my website and just kind of actually divvy up how I wanna read these books and see if I can keep it balanced there. I was just, I did an interview for the podcast, What Should I Read Next yesterday? And she gave me some really good suggestions. So I will share them with you as I get them and read them. But that's it. So, oh, today I am going out to lunch with Erica, my best friend. She's taking me out to lunch for my birthday since we didn't get to do that. It's gonna be nice. It's gonna be nice to just see each other and just kiki and haha. -ha. The last time we got to do this was literally two and a half months ago. So uh, we're excited to do that. Well, you guys, I am going to wrap it up here. I think I've done enough this week. I've caught enough clips for you to make this a decent vlog. And I hope you enjoyed it. Next week is a little bit more chill. I, I, I say that, it's allegedly. But you know what it is? It's like just getting used to like the house being so quiet and chill because everybody's in school, which is nice because I think next week there's some, I wanna get some deep work done. Next week, we shall do this again, same place, same time. Um, I love you so much for watching. Make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And if you've made it this far, please give this video a thumbs up. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.